What's going on guys? So it is a Sunday night here in the UK. I'm just about to head out to grab Ibby. So Ibby's gonna be staying with me for a couple of days. We've got, we've got quite a few things to film over these next couple of days. So I'm sure we'll show you bits here and there, but I hope everyone's having a great day wherever you are in the world. Remember, this particular quarter, Q2, is so important. You cannot be casual. This year is going by so quickly, by the way. So make sure you are doing it the best that you possibly can. Don't know what that guy's thinking about, but anyway, first thing I see when I come off the train, two people just crazy making out, really weird. I mean, I don't know how to get out of this uh, train station. Way out! Right, I do not like the look of this. Oh! Okay, what the f... I am definitely not in the right area. I think that is Hochi right there. Let me, let me, let me go get him before he gets to me. I've got a strange feeling he's he's gone out of the weirdest route. And he's gonna be these steps. I swear I'd seen him. It just disappeared. I didn't be seen him behind that white car. Oh, he's ringing me. Where are you? Right, so I just got to the station. Ibi's apparently already here. He's definitely not here. There's no Ansari in sight. So uh, yeah, let's see. Let's go find him. Finally, we found him. Good morning. <laughs> you look like a thug. <laughs> Ibi, what are you saying? I'm good. I'm yeah, good. you good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How was your travel? Oh, easy. Very short. Yeah, so Ibi lives about five, it's five hours away, right? Yeah, driving wise, about six hours away, six and a half hours. Yeah, so we got a couple of days. We got we got a lot to get done, to be honest. But me, Abby, Abby, <laughs> I've I've done this twice now. I've done it in the SMB. All right. Right. So Abby and Ibdu. So yeah, Abby and Abby and Ibdu. So me, Abdu, and I and Ibdu. <laughs> me, me, Abdu, and Ibby. Yeah, we've been working on a lot of things. So we thought, Do you know what, at this time, because. I was talking earlier, right, about timing. Timing is important. You can't just overload people with information at the wrong time, it's absolutely useless. Because then what ends up happening is that you give someone too much information to work with, they skip levels, and then they don't do the building blocks that they needed to do in the first place. So that's our priority as, as, as mentors and teachers that are further along in the journey, way further than many other people to guide them in the right way. I'm telling you, this year is gonna be such, such a big year. It's already gone by really quick. Like we're in Q2 already. Just gotta be working at it every single day. The results aren't always gonna be there. I think that's the hardest part about life, trading, business, anything. Being able to just keep doing the work, keep doing the work, keep doing the work. Results are ever so slightly visible and then you still got this stubbornness about you where you just get it done regardless. The results will come, you gotta be patient. Anything good that comes to you is always gonna take time. And it's never gonna happen when you think it's gonna happen. Remember that. Yeah, just on that. See, right on cue, ducks have just flown in. Ibi, is this the first time you've seen them? Yeah, yeah. yeah, see, these are my ducks. Here they are. Here they go. They'll go to my front door. <laughs> They'll go to my front door. They'll wait there and then they'll just uh, get some food. Yeah, there used to be two, and now there's two males and a female. I don't know if they trust you yet. They'll come around, don't worry. Don't lose faith. Even the lighting like this, right? Yeah, yeah. So I haven't even got everything on, but the setup, it's wicked. <laughs> right, so we've had a super busy day. Barely had time to film anything, purely just because We've been on calls, we've been grabbing a coffee. We had our we had two calls today. So we had our Monday morning meeting at 9 a.m. We had our team call at 2 p.m. in between. We've been planning a lot of stuff. We've got loads of filming done already. It's gonna be a big one. So Ibi has a special recipe and he's brought with him Yorkshire tea. Is that decaf? Ibi, why is this decaf? Oh, it's not my tough tea. Right, you're going, you, might, you might see um, his special recipe with this. Check. 
check this. It'd be if I showed you this journal. No. Yeah, so Roxanne got me this at 33. This is lovely. It's refillable as well. I've not used it yet, but. What does that mean? 33 is the most powerful number, you know that. Oh, they're refillable. Oh. <laughs> I was going philosophical and spiritual. And um, yeah, it's just really nice. Right, so planning is done, as you can see behind me. We've got loads of things done, very clear on what we need to do next. And then we're just gonna categorize it, which is what we've already started doing. And then we will strategically put things at the right time so people don't overthink it, right? The timing of things is absolutely essential. Like you cannot overload people and think that they're just gonna be able to manage it and then not overthink certain things. So just taking a look at the charts right now, actually. So we've got, main thing on watch for me today, I mean, I was looking at Aussie Kiwi earlier. It's close to that area, but it's this DAX position. So this is the one, I was actually covering this in the SMB, Ibi. Yeah. So SMB, no one I was covering the DAX. This right here, like look, this is exactly what I was referring to, where it's so easy to think this is just like a nothing posi position, like you'd be put off by that sort of price action, but you've got this V, 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 and then you have the flat. Yeah. The flat is usually the one that drops out aggressively. Mm -hmm. And we've got, think on the four hour, not that long, so eight minutes left until that four hour close. Yeah, that's that, strong. Still in the middle of the structure, around 50% of the range. Yeah. Uh, was you looking at an entry? Talk me through, so that entry is at 2 p.m., right? Yeah. Why wouldn't you take that entry? The structure is massive, mm -hmm. first and foremost, and the move is very, very direct. Mm -hmm. Normally, when you have structures that are visible in the four hour like this, they're a bit bigger, or in the one hour time frame, they're a lot more vast. You can even see we've come from this little point on the left if you highlight mm -hmm. that for them. Yeah, yeah that's that right. there. It's just not a common way in which structures form. And if we were in a corrective wave like this, you can get tagged in and out. So it's not that the trade's wrong. Mm -hmm. It just holds a higher risk, that's all. So Quick run through, so pound dollar, nothing yet. Euro dollar still waiting for that break above. Aussie yen, nothing. Kiwi yen, nothing. Dollar CAD, not yet. We're still waiting to form. Yeah, we've still got time. So the way that we trade is very dynamic in the sense of time frame usage is going to come with experience. So someone who jumps on to the way that we trade, you could literally just use the four hour and you could be brilliant. You could be proficient, right? If I gave you a time, let's say I said, look, you can only trade on the four hour. You can only manage on the four hour. You can only execute on the four hour. You'd still be able to be profitable. Easily. You would just be taking more of these advanced swing style positions. Yeah, yeah. And your, your risk to reward wouldn't be that compromised. No. Like when the four hour candle is something like that, yeah. well then yes it would, right? Because you'd end up with a one-to-one -to, -one to the bottom of the range. But generally speaking, a four hour candle doesn't mean massive. Where if you're dealing, this is why I'm never a big fan of just swing trading as a whole. Because if you're, if you're managing on a daily as a daily swing, then that daily, generally speaking, is gonna be made up of like 70, 80, 100, yeah. sometimes 140 pips, where a four hour, you might time the four hour in the right area, but it's enough of a weighted time frame in the right area yeah. to follow through. So then you're not compromised. So you still get your risk to reward, but you're still using a weighted time frame. And the certain... <laughs> using the spider? No. Just above there? Where? You know, uh, above the kitchen counter a bit? No, no. Yeah, there's a, there's a big boy up there. He lives there. Project Find Hochi. Big man sing, yeah. Ready. <laughs> Ready. Let's roll. You ready to eat? Yep. Yeah, let's get some food. So I was on a flight on the way back from Australia, and the one thing I figured out is this industry is full of arrogance. I know it's a strange angle to come from, but I realized that people are so arrogant that they believe that if they know how to mark up a chart and they understand a bit of technical analysis, that will be enough to get them through. And that's probably the biggest lie that you get sold when learning how to trade. So then I realized, right, so, so what is the edge? It's not just strategy alone there's so much more that comes into play than just how you trade the markets. You've got to have everything figured out. Easiest way for me to explain it is that you need to become well-rounded. If you're not well-rounded, you'll do the loop of, you'll get some temporary success, but it will never last. And then you'll always be fantasizing over this idea that if I know more, if I have more understanding, that will get me closer to success. And you will waste years upon years upon years thinking that is the holy grail to success. The good thing is, 
there is a much more simple way. It's not actually complicated what I'm talking about, but I've never met any successful trader that is not well-rounded. And what you usually find, if they're not well-rounded, they might be technically switched on enough to make money, but they're not consistent with it. And that's why we have prop firms right now that showcase that. Lots of money in funding, back to default. Lots of money in funding. There's always a reason why they lose it. And again, if you've not got all these things figured out, it, it will follow you everywhere. Traders just lose. Doesn't matter what system that you're trading. The, the bigger question you should be asking yourself is not, oh, it's this strategy. You should be asking yourself, why do they lose? You know, you have to be confident that every. So this question, I know it's the most traders are losing, especially in this MC. I don't think this is a particular strategy. <laughs> <laughs> What are you gonna to try today? I'm not a coffee guy, so you have to guide me. Yeah, you're gonna to have to have something. So, so when you, so when you have a coffee, what do you have? Cappuccino. Cappuccino. Yeah, yeah man, that sounds like a coffee guy to me. Right, so we're off to the Costa, and uh, do you know what I was thinking? One of the questions that came in, by the way, was, Mark, how many accounts have you blown? I was thinking zero. What? How has it become so normal for people to blow loads of accounts? Like, this is this is not something to flex about. It's not a badge of honor that you should wear. That's why I've never understood it. Because when you look at it from a mathematical point of view, even if you had $1,000, if you're risking 1%, it's difficult for you to blow that account. So you, you never traded, you just gambled. Yeah. So which account have you blown? I'm yet to meet a trader who traded the account and blew it. But I've met a lot of traders that have gambled the accounts. Yeah. So that's the difference. Yeah. So that's why, I've, luckily, I was, just, I was just never taught that way. Yeah. And I had common sense, it's probably not a smart thing to do. Tell you what, something interesting about this service is, it's why I like coming to it in particular, because when I was a brokey, <laughs> I came to this side. <laughs> Let's start that again. I used to come in here in my Nissan Micra and I loved it. So coming here in a different car, in a different unit of time, I think that's what makes any, any level of success a little bit special. Just gonna quickly blow an account. Why? I don't know, I need to, at least do 30 until I get my payout, so. Oh, Daxi boy's there. Literally, we left, what, how long ago? Like 10 minutes ago. You can barely see it. That was you that was, predicting yeah. that. So we've hit the, um, the fair value flap. Right there. <laughs> you are looking forward to your, is it flat white again? Yeah. Yeah, nice. Never you never had a flat white? Never had a flat white. Wow. This is your lucky day. I love the confidence. Yeah, <laughs> you can't doubt your skill set like that. Well, how many years? 15 years? 17. 17. See, 17, 17 years ago. Yeah. yeah. Why do you think I come here all the time? This is the man. <laughs> Reaction, flat white. You're a coffee guy now. I'm a coffee guy now. Yeah, you're a coffee guy. He's sold me now. So, Ibi's definitely a coffee guy. My, my aim is basically to get him off this Yorkshire tea and, uh, and we'll, we'll, we'll get him on cappuccinos, we'll get him on flat whites, all of it. Instead of having a conservative and an aggressive account, on one account, so if you use a numbers line here as an example. How do you know the trader's issue is technical or if it's a psychological problem, right? So they might have got into drawdown because of a technical reason. Psychology is a very, very broad term. It could be a mixture of different things. When someone sat down with a student, for example, and I've sat down with them, and I've been through that phase, I can highlight for them, without them having to spend a year, two years trying to figure it out, I can highlight for them, right, this is what the issue is. You can microanalyze it, and it's very simple. So did they get into drawdown psychologically or technically? How do you know? After comments, as I said before. So they would get into a trade, they would make an error, but they would still take the trade regardless, knowing that error has been made. So that tells me, right, 
they don't have a technical deficiency. There's something in their mind that's pushing them to take that trade. So what's their threshold like? So how do you, how do you then say to somebody, oh, just focus on your psychology later on when that pattern might marinate for a long period of time. And then by the time they come on to work on it, it's much harder to unwire at that stage. It's almost like an infection going untreated. Correct, yeah. If you deal with it early on, you'll be able to catch it. Mm -hmm. You thinking that you can just operate and it's fine, I'll cross that bridge when it comes to it. Well, guess what? That bridge will be very large. At the moment, it's just a, a tiny little bridge. And before you know it, it's Golden Gate Bridge. Yeah. Right? So you don't want these things to go untreated. It's just not attractive to focus on it there and then. No. Pick was on high alert. Still waiting for Alex and Ibby. Yeah, I'm in the office because we, we need we need to shoot before we need to get back by a certain time. You ready to go grab something to eat, Ibby? Yeah, let's go. Yeah, so we've just we've wrapped up filming. Everything's all all good now. So we're gonna go grab some food. This position here, pound dollar. This is more of a tomorrow play. So pound dollar, euro dollar is essentially creating the same structure. Once these are complete, we'll be in a continuation. And on, on Euro dollar in particular, this will be just a short term move, pound dollar as well, short term move, because we're coming into a position where we could easily start turning around for the buys. So we have to be careful of that, but we've got the particular structures there, it's super straightforward. DXY as well, positioning, it's only really one more level that we can get to, and then we're gonna get a big turnaround in price. So it's just about staying ready, because once these runs go, they're super aggressive. So this, Dolma, excellent. Yeah, so this is the beauty of just being uh, polite and kind to people. I think people just forget about simple human interaction, right? You compliment people on their food, that like you just give, most people will be quick to complain. I notice this a lot. People will be quick to complain. If someone doesn't like their food, they'll tell you, you'll know about it straight away. But if you love the food, when was the last time that you go over and compliment the chef and say, look, this was incredible. I always make an effort every single time I go to a restaurant, whatever it is, you actually let the chef know because most of the time he doesn't get any word whatsoever unless it's bad food or a complaint. What a finish. This is what I was talking about. Yeah, when you've got momentum in the game, I know I use football examples a lot, but this is what I was talking about earlier with Barcelona, right? You know you don't have the momentum. You know you've had someone sent off. Easier said than done, but you just got to weather the storm, damage control. You just can't let a minus one go into a, it's probably trading, but you can't let a minus one turn into a minus five. Look, this is too easy. Look, so much time on the ball. Fuck's sake, I had 10 grand on Barcelona. <laughs> None of this crap. We'll go for the real Mars bar. Let's see what it is. Do the whole school. I'll tell you what, when we didn't have much money, and my brother used to say, do you want to go to the BP? It's like a 10 minute walk away. That would mean, because bear in mind, we didn't have nothing in the house. That would mean, right, we're going to the garage and I can pick something. So we, we grew up with pretty much nothing. So <coughs> a, little, a little trip out, a 10 minute walk for you to go to the petrol station and then I can pick a Mars bar, a drink, a packet of crisps. Isn't it funny how like these simple things like that are the things that you remember? So that's why, that's why I love a petrol station. I think it's nostalgic to me because you know, you didn't, we weren't able to get anything. So th those are really good memories. And who doesn't love a Mars bar? It's 20 past 11 here in the UK. Why are you asleep? Work, lazy prick. 